All right, welcome to objective two of rational graphs, graph and rational functions. So in this objective, what we're doing is we're finding the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes, and then go ahead and find the zeros too. So in this picture, um, I want to say that this is a concept by an architectural company called Asymptote. That could be wrong, but the, the building itself is showing some asymptotic behavior. If you, if you take a look at each of these sides, like this one, whenever it curls up, it's going upwards like we saw from that uh, parent function, the rational graph. And then over here, it's doing the same kind of thing. But this was designed with those asymptotes in mind, and that's kind of neat. And then over here with the objective, it's the same kind of thing. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, vertical asymptotes, my friends. It's a vertical line, so it's got to be of the form x equals something. So let me read off this math, and let's decipher it. Let's figure out what it says. So the line x equals a is a vertical asymptote of the graph of f of x. We're assuming this is a rational function, right? If f of x approaches positive infinity or negative infinity as x approaches a. What? Very, very easy. Okay, what we're basically saying is that the y values are getting closer to positive infinity or negative infinity as we approach a. a would be the number we're not supposed to divide by. So for the rational parent function, it was zero. Let's look at the very first graph over here on the left. So this vertical asymptote is at x equals 1. So as I approach 1 from the right-hand side, I go down to negative infinity. And as I approach negative 1 from the right-hand side, from the left-hand side, I go up to positive infinity. That's what this definition is saying. Look over here. Now, it says or in it. So it doesn't have to both be one up and one down. Look at the one on the far right-hand side. Here, the vertical asymptote is at 1. So, as I approach 1 from the left-hand side, it goes up to positive infinity. As then I approach it from 1 on the right-hand side, it goes up to positive infinity also. Okay, so here's a question. Why does this have a vertical asymptote at 1? And why does the one on the left have a vertical asymptote at negative one. That's a good question. Very good question. What about the one right in the middle? Where's its vertical asymptote? It doesn't have one, right? It doesn't have one. Where vertical asymptotes are coming from is from division by zero. So on the first one, if I stick in negative one for x, that makes the denominator equal to zero, and you have yourself a vertical asymptote. The one on the far right hand side, it's one. If you stick one into the equation, makes division by zero, so you have vertical asymptote. Okay, the one that's in the middle, there's nothing that you can stick in there to make it zero, because you're squaring the number. If you put a positive number, a negative number in there, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be positive, and then you're adding one more to it, so you'll never get zero down in the denominator. So that's why it doesn't have a vertical asymptote. Okay, the next kind of asymptotes are horizontal asymptotes. So since it's a horizontal line, it has to be y equals something. So let's make sense of this definition. The line y equals b is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of f of x, again, a rational function. If f of x approaches b as x approaches positive or negative infinity. Notice this definition is a little bit backwards from the other one. It's x that's now approaching positive or negative infinity. So now instead of going up and down, we're going right and left, okay? And our graph, our y values, are just getting stuck at one particular number. They're getting closer and closer to one particular number. So look at the far left-hand graph. On the right-hand side, as the graph, as x values are starting going to positive infinity, this graph is getting closer and closer to the number 2. Same thing from the left-hand side. If it goes to a, po a negative infinity, it's going to 2. Basically, this graph is trying to look like the line y equals 2, a horizontal line. 
but somebody divided by zero and destroyed like space and time right there, created a black hole. And that's, that's pretty much why people say that. Okay, so here's kind of a reverse black hole. It also has a horizontal asymptote. This one is the x-axis. As I go to positive infinity, it goes down to the x-axis. Negative infinity, also to the x-axis. This one is trying to look like the x-axis. It's trying to look like y equals zero. But somebody divided by zero right here and destroyed the graph. Okay, so how do you get horizontal asymptotes? That's what we're going to talk about in just a minute. So let's piece these together. Fact, the graphs of rational functions have asymptotes. So here's a query for you. Can the graphs of rational functions be continuous? What does continuous mean again? Continuous means that when I draw the graph, I don't have to lift up my pencil or stylus. So can they be continuous? What do you think? Well, every time I divide by zero, it makes one of those vertical asymptotes that breaks the graph. Is that going to happen every single time? Well, if I look, remember what that one right there in the middle, this one is a continuous graph, even though it has an asymptote that only has a horizontal. If you have a vertical asymptote, then it can't be continuous. And that's an important thing, because you can never, ever cross a vertical asymptote. If you crossed it, what would happen? You would be dividing by zero. OK. So here's how we find our asymptotes. So let's look at this pretty scary looking function, this rational function. Again, it's n of x over d of x, the numerator function, denominator function. These are just polynomials. They could be linear. They could be quadratic, cubic, whatever. Okay, things that we've seen before. On the top, let's, let's talk about what all of these little letters mean. a sub n is the leading coefficient. x to the nth power, so that's the degree. n is the degree of the top, the numerator. That's the degree. And my arrow disappeared for whatever reason. Okay. And then I, I'm just decreasing the power. So this was n, now it's going down by 1. Keeps going down until I reach to the first power. a sub 0, or a sub naught, is the constant for the top. OK, let's look at the denominator function. The denominator function, the b sub d, is the leading coefficient of that polynomial function. And d on the x, so d raised to the, or x raised to the d power, that's the degree of the bottom. All right? And then again, we're decreasing in the powers of d, whatever that happens to be, until I end up with just the bottom constant. OK, so how do I get vertical asymptotes from these graphs? I get them from dividing by 0. So ver uh, very simple, vertical asymptotes, asymptotes, asymptotes? I want one of those. Anyway, uh, a vertical asymptote comes from where the denominator is equal to 0. OK? So these were just the numbers that we, we just took out of the domain. Wherever we're dividing by 0, we're going to get a vertical asymptote. That's the easy part of this. The horizontal ones, in just a second, there are three rules for those. OK. And it doesn't have anything to do with dividing by zero. What it does have to do with is the degree of the top and the bottom. OK, so horizontal asymptote, here's the first one. D, what is that again? That's the degree of the denominator. And N is the degree of the numerator. So this is saying, if the degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree of the top, then you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. In other words, the x-axis. If the degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree of the top, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. So for example, I had y is equal to 1 over x. This is the only one we've looked at so far. So um, the degree of the top, if it's just the number 1, the degree is equals 0. And the degree of the bottom here is 1. That's bigger than 0, so that means the x-axis was a horizontal asymptote for us. OK. 
so, so there we go. This happens, the reason why this happens is because the denominator is getting so much bigger, faster than the numerator. Again, if I looked at this case, one divided by x, here, the top is staying the same, but the x keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And what happens when you take a small number and you divide it by a big number? Well, you're getting closer and closer to zero. And that's why you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, that's the first case. The degree of the bottom is bigger than the degree of the top. y equals zero, x-axis, is a horizontal asymptote. Okay, why well, d is greater than n, but what if it's um, equal? What if the degree of the bottom and the top are exactly the same? If that's the case, we have a horizontal asymptote at, read that off right there, a sub n over b sub n. Remind me what those things are again. a sub n is the leading coefficient of the top, and b sub n is the leading coefficient of the bottom. So in other words, if the degrees are the same, then your horizontal asymptote um, is the ratio of the leading coefficients. Just the top number divided by the bottom number. Could be y equals a half, y equals two, whatever. Okay? All right, and so and the reason why this one happens is because since the degrees are the same, the top is getting bigger at the same rate as the bottom. And so, I'm just going to be left with whatever the ratio of the leading coefficients is. I'm going to see that play out in just a little bit. I'm going to show it to you with some numbers. All right. So then the third and final case, look at these all totally make sense. I talked about when the D was bigger than N, when D is equal to N. So the last one, of course, is when D is less than N. If D is less than N, then there's no horizontal asymptote. Why is that the case? The reason why that's the case is because the numerator this time is getting bigger faster. So if I take a, a big number and I divide it by a small number, well, I'm just getting a bigger number back. I'm going to positive infinity, which means I don't have a horizontal asymptote. All right, so those are the three cases. If the denominator's degree is bigger than the top, we're approaching zero. Horizontal asymptote y equals zero. If the degrees are both the same, then my horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the leading coefficients. Water, please. And finally, if the degree of the bottom is smaller than the top, then you don't have one at all. Okay? So let's look at this with some specific numbers. Uh, a function, and let's plug some numbers in, and so that you don't have to memorize these things, right? If you understand what's happening with the numbers, you won't have anything to really memorize. You're just internalizing it. Okay, so here's my function, f of x equals x divided by x squared plus 1. Obviously, the degree of the bottom, 2, is bigger than the top, 1. So, what should I expect to be the horizontal asymptote? I should be getting to y equals zero, right? Because the denominator is bigger than the top. So here is, when I stick in 100, remember, it's the x values for horizontal asymptotes that are going to positive infinity and negative infinity. Stick in 100, evaluate it, divide it out, and I get 0 0.0099999. Nine, 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 nine. That's pretty small. That's getting pretty close to zero. So. When the denominator's degree is bigger than the top, the denominator is increasing faster than the numerator. And therefore, we're trying to get closer and closer to zero as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So there was the first case. Here's the next one. When the denominator's degree is exactly equal to the numerator. And that's what we have here. We have a squared over a squared. What should I expect? the horizontal asymptote to be. It should be 2 over 1. y equals 2. So let's see. Plug in a number like 100 and uh, work it out, blah, 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 math, math, math. Look at that number. I put it on 100 and it's almost 2. We're going to get keep getting closer and closer and closer to the number 2. So when the degrees of the top and the bottom are the same, 
the top and the bottom are increasing at roughly the same rate. And so what you're trying to approach is the ratio of the leading coefficients. In this case, two over one. So it's getting closer and closer to two. And y equals two is your horizontal asymptote. One more case. So this time the degree of the bottom is smaller than the top. That's what we have here. We have a x squared over an x. And remember when the degree of the top is bigger, we don't have one. No horizontal asymptote. So let's look at it with plug it in a 100, doing the math, and I get 100.1. If I plug in 1,000, it's going to get bigger. If I plug in 10,000, it's going to get bigger. It's just increasing without bounds. So you're not approaching a specific number. So when the degree of the top is bigger than the bottom, the top is increasing much, much faster than the bottom. And we're, the whole function is increasing without bound, right? As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's why we say you don't have a horizontal asymptote. All right, um, let's call this one, this video done. Come back and look at some exercises.